In this short video, we're going to show you how you can model custom shapes in Aspire. So in the modeling tools, we're going to go into this icon here where we create shapes with custom profiles. And that's going to open up the form. So in order for us to create a shape, we need a closed vector or a set of closed vectors, followed by an open vector or profile vector that we can use to then create a cross section or profile for our shape. So as an example, we can take this closed vector here, hold down shift and select this profile here. And then you can go over here and then press create to create your shape. And so if we just tilt our view, we can take a look at the shape that's been created. You can see a real nice effect there. Now it's worth noting here that the vector cross section that I used, the width of that is the same as the radius of the circle that we've got here. And so hence what we're seeing here is as if this center line of our cross section is in the center of our circle and then that this kind of shape is kind of being spun around. So let's just put that back in the top view and we're just going to take that and if you didn't like the look of a component you could go ahead and delete that. Now we're going to look at another example. So we've got another cross section here. It's exactly the same as this profile here. However, all we've done is we've just sized it so it's a lot smaller. So with that selected, we're going to hold down shift, select this new profile over here, and then go ahead and press create. Okay, so you can see we've got a totally different result here. And what's happening in both, both times is the profile is just being swept around and it's been scaled according to the actual height of the vector itself. Now, obviously, as this vector here is a lot smaller, the width is a lot smaller and so it's kind of just being swept around and then where it gets to the top over here it just flattens out okay so if your cross section is smaller it's going to flatten out at the top portion of your part okay so again let's just take that and we're going to delete it i'm going to take a look at the effect of another cross section so again, let's take our vector here, and now we're going to take a look at this cross section. So it's exactly the same as this one, except we've flipped it around. And so we're going to hold down shift and select this cross section here, and then we'll go ahead and press create and take a look at the effect of that. Okay, so you can see here, it's doing exactly what the profile says it's going to do. So you've got this flat, straight, vertical shape here so that's on the outer side and then it's going to kind of step inside which we're seeing inside of that circle so always be mindful of the positioning and kind of orientation of your vector cross sections okay so again we're just going to take that we're going to delete it and then finally we're going to take this vector here and we're going to take a look at this profile here. Now this profile doesn't have a leg so it is exactly the same as this vector that we've got here except we've removed the leg. So this is what we call the leg it just kind of holds that profile up. So hold down shift and select that vector there and then we'll go ahead and press create and we can see the effect of that. And you can see we've got a totally different result here. And um, we've got more of a shallower shape. And the reason for that is because of the cross section. So because we've removed that leg, the way that we're actually creating this shape, if we just tilt our view, it's as if this is our zero plane running along here. And then this is the shape that is being created. So, if you do create profiles that don't have a leg and you get this sort of result and it's not what you're expecting, then we recommend that you create a vector that actually has a leg in there, like the example that we looked at earlier. So let's just put that back into the top view. And then we're just going to take that component and we're just going to delete it. So let's select our vector again and let's go with our first profile and we'll go ahead and press create. Okay, and once you're happy with your shape, you can give that a name. So you could just call that one shape one, and then you could go ahead, press apply, and then you can close out. And then 
It's worth noting that once you have created your shape, it actually has no relevance to the vector that was used to create it. You can move it around if you wanted to, and we can see our component listed within our levels bar at the top here. We can see that there, we can switch off the visibility of that component, we can switch it on again. We can also find that available in our component tree tab over on the left hand side. And again, we can just turn off the visibility and switch that back on if we wanted to. So let's just go back to our design tab. Now, whilst we haven't altered the original shape of this by transforming it, we can actually press E for edit to go back into the custom profile shape. And so if we press E on the keyboard now, you'll see it allows us to go back into the create custom shape where we're able to make further edits to our part. Now, if we didn't like what we've got here, we could just take that and then we could just simply go ahead and press delete. So now we're going to look at the effects of adjusting various heights and how we can control that within our view. So we're going to take this vector here. We're going to hold down shift and select this vector over here. We'll go ahead and press create. Over in our view control, let's just click on this portion here just to take a look at our part at a different angle. So now that we've created our shape, you'll see that we are presented with various handles and all of these handles enable us to further control the outcome and the height of the shape that we've got here. So we're going to start this handle over here. So this is our limit handle. So it's currently at 100%. Okay, so we're not actually seeing any changes there because we are at 100%. But if I click on this handle and then I drag down, you'll see what's happening here is we're just choosing where we limit our shape. Okay, so it's creating this a flat plane. And then when we get to 100% of the overall profile, we don't see that flat shape. So looking at this graphic here, this is essentially what's going on. We're just dragging a plane down uh, to just essentially cut that off. And you can create some really interesting effects here. And if we just let go, you can see the effect of that. If you wanted to be more precise, you can type in a value. So for example, we could say we want that to be 70 and it will do that there for you. Then we've got this handle here. So this is your base height. And if we click on that and then drag that up, you can see what it does is it creates vertical height. This is a base. Okay, so you can bring that up or down. Again, we can just let that go there. That looks pretty good. Next up, we've got the scale option. So this essentially limits the height of the shape by scaling the shape up or down, but it retains the actual profile. So for example, we can take that and you can see it does that there. And the really nice thing about this is that you can really get a feel for where you want to kind of let go just by looking at all the visual cues there. So we'll just let go over here like the way that that looks. And then finally here, we have the option to adjust the total height, okay, which is a combination of the scale and the base. So looking over here in the form, so we can see exactly what we've got here, scale of 103%, base height 0.1032. And then we've got a total height here of 1.2967. And so if we go on this handle here, and let's say we reduce that right down, you'll see that it will reduce the scale and the base height as it's kind of scaling that in proportion. Another thing that you can do whilst you are in this mode is press N on the keyboard and that will put you into node edit mode. And this enables you to take your outer shape or even your cross section and make tweaks to that and you'll see that they will update accordingly on our 3D view which is super handy. We can also look at moving this shape in as well and then when we come out of node edit mode so if we just right click right click again and then select our shape we still have access to the handles in order for us to then uh, make further changes. And then once you're happy, you could go ahead, press apply and then close out of the form. 
So we're just going to take this, we're going to press control on the keyboard and then click on our component here and drag that out and that will create a copy here. I just want to demonstrate that once you are out the form, you still have access to the node edit mode. So if we go back into node edit mode, we can adjust this like so. And again, we can also look at adjusting the cross section, which makes this super powerful. And you can see that we're able to alter all of this whilst not being in the actual form itself. And so again, if we just right click to come out of node edit mode and then take that shape and then again, press E on the keyboard, that'll take us back into alter various handles if we wanted to. Now, the only time that you won't be able to edit a shape post creation is if we transform the model. So let's just close out here and then we're just going to take this handle here and we're just going to stretch it out. Okay, so we're totally taking it out of its primitive state. And so now if I go ahead and select that and then press N on the keyboard, I'm no longer able to access the node edit mode in order for me to alter the shape or the profile. And also if I take that shape and then press E on the keyboard, you'll see it no longer takes me back into the custom shape form. Instead, it takes me to the component properties form where I just have access to the basic handles where I can only adjust the uh, total height scale and base height. So taking it out of its primitives just means you can't go back in and make those edits that we saw earlier. So let's just close out here. We're just going to take that component and we're just going to delete it. So now let's have a look at some more options. So we'll go back into our design tab. We're going to go back into the create shape of custom profile tool. So this time we're going to take this star over here. Let's just alter our angle. Uh, we're going to hold down shift and select this profile over here and then we're going to go ahead and press create. Okay, so you can see we've got a very interesting shape here, but where you have internal corners, you do have the option to preserve those internal corners. And so if we check that, you'll see the result of that. You get much sharper corners, which can essentially be much better results. And you can see that looks pretty cool. So let's just put that back in that angle there. So now let's take a look at the effect of where we have two vectors. So we're going to take this vector here and this vector here, shift and select this cross section over here, and then we'll go ahead and press create. Okay, so you can see the effect of that and you can see how it's creating that shape. So it's essentially kind of sweeping it from the outer to the inner profile. And this is the result that we're getting over here. And again, we do have options to then further control this shape using those handles. Now we have another option where we take the profile and blend it from one vector to another where we can use this option to blend to inner vectors. And if we check that, you can see that the software's swept that custom profile from the outside in, where it fills the center with a flat shape. And so you can see there's lots of different options for us to be able to create all sorts of shapes. So we're going to look at one final option here, and that's this handle here. Now if we click on that, that will open up this small form here. And so here we've got the ability to choose how we want to combine this component with other components. And then we've got two options here to apply a fade and a tilt. So fade will enable you to fade a component down in a given direction at a percentage. And then tilt will enable you to create a tilted or angled base height in order for you to tilt the component. So let's have a look at how we do both of those. So in order to create a fade, first you need to check the fade option. Then what you need to do is you need to set your first anchor point. So we're going to use the set option here. And then over in your 3D view, you can see we're now presented with an anchor that has the number one next to it. So this anchor is where we set our first point where we want to fade from. So for example, if I wanted to fade our component from the left to the right, then I'd click on this space over here on the left hand side of my component. And when I click on that, I've essentially set my pivot 
fade point and you'll see now that my anchor has a number two next to it and if I move my mouse I'm now presented with this line and this line uh, represents the direction in which I want to apply my fade. So for example I said I want to go from left to right so I'm going to click my second point over on the right hand side of our component over here and then if we just go to our view control and then use the front option here so we're looking at that up the y-axis and then if we just select that component again you'll see that it's faded that at a default of 50 percent so we can choose to increase that if we wanted to so press on this arrow and then you'll be presented with a slider and you can see we can totally uh, bring that right down to 100% of its original height on the right hand side and then again if we go back to that slider we can just reduce that or we can just bring that back to no fade like so. So if you didn't want to apply a fade you can just uncheck that option there. So now let's have a look at the tilt so same principle so we check the tilt box here so let's just go back to the top view we're going to set our anchor point so let's go from left all the way to the right hand side so we just move that box out the way and then go over to the right hand side click to do that and then let's just go to the front view and then this time we measure our tilt as an angle okay and we can do that like so. So let's just move that box over here so we can see that a little better and you can see we can just really increase that, decrease that. You can see we've got lots of different control over the shapes that we're creating and tilts and fades are perfect for when you want them to create the look that one component is either in front or behind another component. So that completes this tutorial on how to use the custom shape tool in Aspire. Thank you for watching.